Member for Victoria. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak on the Bill C-23, the so-called Fair Elections Act, at this second reading stage. I wish to say at the outset that I am strongly opposed to this initiative on both process and substantive grounds, which I'd like to address in turn. On the process side, it's very difficult for me to explain in my riding of Victoria just how a bill of over 240 pages could be introduced on a Tuesday and then that the Conservative government would seek to invoke time allocation or closure on a Wednesday after only two speakers. There was a 17-month delay, Mr. Speaker, from the month that they had committed to table this bill. It was promised for back in September of 2012. Then there was no consultation with Elections Canada or with other parties or MPs, which I understand has been the tradition in this place. Before this foundation statute, this quasi-constitutional law came forward. Then there's one day a 240-page bill dropped on the table, debate forced to begin the next day. The government refused to agree to an NDP motion to, to send the bill to committee uh, after first reading, which would have allowed changes, wholesale changes to the bill, unlike what's going on at present. And let's not finally forget, surprise, surprise, that this unfair elections act arrived in the House just before the budget comes out, and at the same time, Canadians are naturally focused on the Olympics. Well, that's what's really going on. I know Canadians understand what's going on. I just met with a number of students uh, uh, at the Flame, uh, and they pre presented us with 30,000 signatures on petitions that were gathered in one weekend, because Canadians understand what this government is trying to do, and we're not going to let them get away with it if we possibly can. The Globe and Mail asks today the question that I wish to ask, Mr. Speaker, simply this. Why the rush? Why the rush to get this through? Is it because perhaps the Conservatives expect Canadians not to know the content of this bill, and so if it's pushed through, they, they simply won't notice? That's a, 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 very ser a very serious allegation that I'm making, and it basically demonstrates something I hoped I never would have in this place, which is utter cynicism for the way in which this bill has been dealt with. Again, two speeches, then we'll move to closure, rush it through as quickly as we can. Even Canada's national paper understands what's going on. Canadians do too. The Minister of so-called Democratic Reform, who's been so aggressive in warding off criticisms of Conservatives' elections wrongdoing, which were later proven to be well-founded, now defends this as a fair and judicious measure. Well, there may be some things in this bill that we like, Mr. Speaker, but in typical Conservative fashion, there are many things that are pushed in there that are going in the opposite way that a democracy should function. Let's call it a spade a spade a spade. Forget the Orwellian language, the title of this bill. Let's call it for what it is. It's an unfair election act, and I'm going to explain why, on substance, I believe that is the case. But first, Mr. Speaker, we're not dealing with a regular bill. We're dealing with a bill like the Access to Information Act or the Privacy Act, which are essentially quasi-constitutional in nature. These are the foundation rules for how we govern our democracy. My brilliant colleague from Toronto, Danforth, spent many hours poring over this complicated law. He reckons there's at least 30 serious deficiencies in it. I'm only going to have time to talk about two, but two which I think are quite dramatic. And Mr. Speaker, to be talking about this with the closure gun pointed at our head is simply inexcusable, and I'm frankly saddened and ashamed to be here in this context. It's shocking that the Conservative Minister for Democratic Reform failed to consult with the chief electoral officer about these changes, and then made misleading statements during question periods suggesting that he did. The new bill would restrict the ability of Elections Canada to communicate with voters, narrowing the legal authority of the chief electoral officer, eliminating provisions that allow Elections Canada to promote voting to quote, persons and groups most likely to experience difficulties in exercising their democratic rights, close quote. All he can do is tell people, you know, who, 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 where, who, who can vote, where to vote candidates. He can't talk about promoting democracy, which he finds, and I quote, an affront to democracy. And I agree with our chief electoral officer. We are fortunate to have officers of parliament like him and the Information Commissioner and the Privacy Commissioner who are shielded 
and can speak the minds on behalf of Canada, Canadians, and I'm proud that he's doing so like us today. So, to talk about two issues of substance alone, I'd like to focus on, first, the weakening of Elections Canada, and secondly, again calling a spade a spade, voter suppression mechanisms in this bill. Well, the Minister has been attacking Elections Canada for many years. Shortly after the bill was introduced, he uh, accused it of being biased and, quote, wearing a jersey when it comes to prosecuting the Conservatives for rulemaking, for rule breaking. The bill clearly attacks Elections Canada by gutting its powers. The Chief Electoral Officer had asked for more powers, as did the NDP, including the ability to request financial documents related to the election. The Conservatives have failed to uh, include these measures. Rather, the Chief Electoral Officer is appointed and responsible to Parliament, but now a, a, another uh, agency, the DPP, the Director of Public Prosecutions, appointed by the Attorney General, accountable to the government, is going to be where the Commissioner of Elections is housed. We're supposed to be happy about that, I, I, I think. Well, no one in the elect Chief Electoral Office, uh, of the Office of Elections Canada, is, is happy about that. And consider what they could have done. We have a, member, a number of securities commissions around this land. We have the Competition Bureau, federal agency, an independent law enforcement agency that ensures Canadian businesses and consumers prosper in a competitive environment. The Supreme Court of Canada has applauded the way in which that agency operates. Why can't we be there now? Well, they, uh, I would invite people to see the Chrysler and Competition Bureau, a decision of 1992 decision of Mr. Justice Gantier in the Supreme Court of Canada, where he is complimentary about the way in which that enforcement agency uh, proceeds, both civil and criminal remedies. We could have had that. We, would have, we had that before, but now we're supposed to be happy with the changes to weaken Elections Canada by sending the commissioner somewhere else to be accountable to the government. It just doesn't make sense. I know Canadians will see through this. What is the key problem with this, Mr. Speaker? It is that the bill refuses to enact perhaps the single most effective measure that would enhance investigations. What's that? Giving the, the same powers to compel testimony to the commissioner uh, to investigate. The same safeguards as currently exist for Competition Act investigators. But that's not good enough for the Conservatives. It seems to work fine according to the Supreme Court for competition, but we are supposed to try something different in this bill. Why? Because they have a personal vendetta with some of the people at Elections Canada? I'll let Canadians decide. C23 also ignores that part of the NDP motion that Conservatives voted for in, tw in March 2012, which called upon Elections Canada to have the power to request and receive national political party documents to enable Elections Canada to assess whether the Canada Elections Act had been complied with. Not on in this bill. The second part of the major deficiency is voter suppression. The Conservatives, as Canadians know, have a track record of breaking election laws with their in-and-out scheme, robocalls designed to suppress opposition votes, and rule-breaking overspending by Conservative ministers. Well, this bill would disallow the, pro the, the process of vouching, which I'm proud to say one of my constituents, Rose Henry, an Aboriginal activist who works with the homeless, went to the British Columbia Court of Appeal uh, to say is one of the elements critical to uh, the, the voting process. And the court said that that was in a critical part of the voting process and struck down the constitutionality, uh, uh, upheld the constitutionality of what she had sought, sought to strike down, but on the basis that, among other things, vouching was part of the, the fabric of voting in Canada. They're taking that away. Rose, I invite you to go back to the courts, vindicate your rights as a voter, because this time I predict you will win because this law will be found unconstitutional. Mr. Speaker, this law is a travesty. Canadians are getting to understand it, and I'm hoping they will rise up and call it for what it is, an unfair elections act. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, questions and comments? The Honourable Minister of State for Democratic